This is a tutorial on the Embedded Character Sheet plugin. Uh, the Embedded Character Sheet plugin is a complex plugin, uh, very flexible. Uh, so we will be going through the basics here of how to uh, use it, uh, but we will not be touching on any of the advanced features which um, may come out in a future tutorial. So what is the Character Sheet plugin? The Character Sheet plugin uh, or more specifically the embedded character sheet plugin allows you to display a character sheet within Tailspire uh, and uh, you can display character sheets for the different uh, PCs in your game and possibly even character sheets for your monsters depending on what information you provide. Uh, it should be noted that uh, there is a uh, another plugin called the character sh uh, sheet plugin not embedded character sheet plugin but character sheet plugin uh, which was the predecessor to this plugin and it created a form like uh, character sheet that uh, floated above your uh, tailspire so it was not ideal for people who have a single uh, monitor because uh, you <clears throat> basically had to tab between your tailspire game and your uh, character sheet. So the embedded character sheet plugin uh, remedies this uh, by making the uh, character sheet available directly in Tailspire and it also provides a bunch of embedded editing so you can modify the values of the character sheet uh, directly from the plugin uh, whereas the old character sheet uh, plugin required you to go outside of Tailspire to update the files. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, there are three components to the ECS embedded character sheet. One, there is a background image file. Two, there is a layout file. And three, there is the data file. Now, the background image and the layout file form the appearance of the character sheets. Uh, in a pen and paper game, uh, they would be like taking the copies of the character sheet in the back of the book and making copies and giving out a blank character sheet to each of the players. Uh, just like in a pen and paper um, game, you can have one layout or more layouts. So um, if you're taking a copy of the um, character sheet in the back of the book, that means everybody is getting the same layout. Um, but there's uh, uh, character sheets that are class specific, for example, that you can um, either create, download, or, or buy, um, in which case uh, then you would have a layout for each uh, class. Uh, you may also have a different layout for your monsters. So a PC may have a character sheet that has a full breakdown of everything, whereas uh, you may have a layout for monsters that's just like a stat block. Um, so whether or not you use one layout or multiple layouts is completely up to you, just like it would be in a pen and paper game. Uh, we're going to go here through uh, one layout, so we're going to kind of assume a common uh, layout for all PCs, um, but again, um, the number of layouts is up to you. Uh, now, the uh, character-specific data file is uh, unique to each character, and it holds the actual information that is going to be displayed on the character sheet. So, as we discussed earlier, the background and layout kind of represents like the blank character sheet, and the character specific data is basically all of the information that you would write on that blank, blank character sheet if you were playing in a pen and paper game. Okay, so <clears throat> let's start by talking about the background image. So the background image is basically what your character sheet will look like. So you want to make sure a few things. First of all, you want to make sure that uh, your layout fits the screen that you're going to be using. Uh, keep in mind that uh, not all players may be using the same resolution. 
Um, if uh, you have players that are using a lower resolution, you need to tailor, tailor your character sheet um, to that resolution or make a um, specific layout for that player to use, um, which would have a different layout. Um, so basically the background should include everything that is static. Um, everything that doesn't change uh, should be included in the background. So that means any kind of images, any kind of borders, any kind of labels, everything except for the numbers that will actually change depending on um, the specific character. So here we have an example of a character sheet. Uh, this is actually a, a pretty good character sheet here for 5e, uh, but the one thing that we see here is where the character name goes. Uh, somebody's put in a label that says name goes here, which doesn't work because when we try to put a name there, it's going to conflict with that label. So before using this um, uh, character sheet background, we would go in into our uh, image editing program and remove that name goes here uh, to make it usable for the purpose. Okay, so then we go on to our layout file. Now the layout file uh, is basically indicating all of the spots on your background where there will be some kind of character specific information displayed. Um, so if we're looking at this uh, uh, background here, things like your strength score, your um, modifier, your dexterity score, your modifier, um, you the numbers for all of this, uh, the skills here, uh, your armor class, initiative, speed, all of those things are uh, spots where we want to place some character specific information. So what we need to do in the layout file is identify all of the, those spots, <clears throat> which means uh, the position and the size, and give it a unique name. Each of those spots needs to have a unique name because then once we get down to the data file where we're going to be providing the actual character spe specific information, what we're basically going, going to be doing is saying this named spot has this value. <clears throat> so the named spots are uh, referred to in the documentation as placeholders. So we are creating a bunch of placeholders which we can then fill in with real data depending on which character we're trying to display. Okay, The information um, about the placeholders is stored in a layout file which is a JSON um, text file. Uh, here is a example of one here. Um, obviously here I'm showing only one element uh, that would be like one placeholder. Uh, your uh, layout will have many many more obviously <clears throat> but you get the idea. So what we have here is we have a background entry which points to that background image. So when we saved that background image we gave it a, fi a file name and this is what identifies that um, uh, that background. Uh, then for the background we also have a position and size. So when we display our character sheet the position is the location of the uh, top left corner uh, so we don't need to display it in the top left corner of the uh, screen. We can display it somewhere else and that's what position dictates. Uh, size dictates how large that uh, character area is. Normally you want to uh, make your size be the same as your background image, um, but there could potentially be um, some cases where you don't want the two to align. <clears throat> and then lastly what we've got is this array of elements. So an element is basically a uh, placeholder. It has all the information about a placeholder and as I said I'm showing one here, you are going to have many, uh, basically every s spot on your character sheet that is to have a character value is a placeholder which has a corresponding elements entry here. So let's look at 
a typical element here. Um, so we have type. Uh, the type uh, normally is zero. Uh, there is different types for more advanced features, but we're not going to go through that. So basically, <clears throat> a type zero means a regular uh, placeholder entry. Okay. Then we are going to have, it, again, the position for the uh, placeholder. So x, y uh, coordinates in pixels. And we are going to have the size of the um, placeholder element. So obviously, uh, these two are going to depend on your uh, image file. And the size should be sized to <clears throat> whatever uh, size the entry will be. Uh, then we have style. Style is optional but uh, recommended and you can uh, set a bunch of uh, different uh, style elements. The typical ones are shown here. Uh, font size, font style, and your normal text color. Um, so font size obviously di dictates how large the text is. Uh, font style dictates whether it's uh, normal, uh, bold, or italics. Um, and normal color text allows you to dictate the color of the font. Okay, and then we have two other entries. One is content and one is role. So the content is what is actually displayed on the character sheet in that placeholder. <clears throat> so um, if content is for example, a word, that's what's going to be displayed. Um, in that case, you've basically turned the uh, placeholder element into a label, um, which is can be done that way, but it is more recommended to put labels into your background because then there's less elements for the uh, plugin to have to work with. Uh, typically, instead of um, some hard-coded text, the content will have uh, brace brackets and a name and what the brace brackets mean is that it's a placeholder. Uh, what the placeholders mean is the value is determined from the character specific file. Okay, So we're making a layout here that's generic. So for example here we've got car name, character name. <clears throat> so we don't know what character name it's going to be yet because this is a generic layout. It's going to be used for Fred, it's going to be used for Mary, it's going to be used for Pippin. Um, so we've created a placeholder called car name that we expect to define in our character specific file um, so that when we look up Pippin it's going to um, replace the placeholder of car name with Pippin Whereas when we were looking at Mary, it's going to replace it with Mary. Um, so that is the content. The content is what is actually displayed. The roll, if it is not empty, is what does it actually roll when you click on the content text. <clears throat> so in this particular case, it's a character name. So we don't want to roll anything when we click on the name. So uh, the roll is le uh, left empty. Whereas if this was, for example, something like maybe your athletics skill, uh, we would have here a role. Now the role works the same way. You can hard code entries directly into the role, but then your layout file is not being generic. It can't be reused, right? If you, um, if you fill in the actual values of a role like 1d20 plus 5, for your athletics, that means er anybody who's using that layout would be stuck with those numbers. And that's not typically what you want because then you're going to end up with a layout file for each character, which is, I mean, you can definitely do that, but it defeats the purpose of creating a layout. <clears throat> so typically, your role will simil uh, similarly use a placeholder. So if, for example, this was an athletic skill, we might have brace brackets with athletics written in the, uh, you know, as the placeholder name. And then in the um, character specific data file, we're gonna define that uh, to be something like strength plus your proficiency bonus or just strength if you're not proficient. 
um, and assign the values there. Okay, so uh, the process of getting all of the elements into your uh, <coughs> layout file is a tedious process. Yes, there is no real shortcut for that. You will have to go through it and do it uh, manually. But like I said, the benefit of having layouts is that uh, ideally you need to do this once per layout and after that many characters can use the same layout so you don't have to do this uh, process um, once for each character. You do it once per each layout. <clears throat> so um, how do we get the information uh, all of, like, of position and um, size? Well, you could do it by trial and error, by plugging in numbers, uh, seeing what happens, and then correcting, but there is easier ways. Um, if you open up your background image in a uh, image program, um, most programs will have this feature. Um, I happen to use paint.net because it's a fairly uh, decent image um, editing uh, software that's free, but I'm sure your um, paid, uh, you know, paint uh, paint shop and those type of uh, uh, software will have the exact same feature, um, and that is basically um, you select the selection tool, you make a rectangular selection around the area where you want the value to show up in your background image, and typically at the bottom you will then get information about that selection, which happens to include the position and the size. <clears throat> so that's a relatively quick way that you can get your position and size information to put into uh, your layout file. Okay, <clears throat> so once we've created our layout file, um, we need to create the data files. So once again, um, in a, an ideal world where we're just going to use a single layout file, we have a single background image, we have a single layout file, but we will have multiple data files because each character or each monster needs its own data file. Um, once again, the data file is the actual information that is going to be plugged into the layout to display a specific character. Uh, so similar <coughs> to the uh, uh, to the layout file, the uh, data specific file is a JSON file, plain text. Um, it has a <coughs> layout um, property. The layout property allows you to dictate which layout the character uses. So for example, when we were talking about earlier about having a layout for PCs and having a layout for like a stat block layout for monsters, um, the in the data file the layout could dictate that. So your PCs would use like a PC layout and your monsters would use the stat block layout. <clears throat> and then um, the file has a um, uh, a array of well, it's not an array, it's an object of stats. And basically what that is, <clears throat> is it's a key value pair. Um, you have the placeholder and then you have its value. So ideally what you want to do is every single placeholder that you defined in the layout file, you want to have a value for it in the data file. Um, if there are certain characters that aren't going to use some of the entries in your layout, uh, it is generally a good idea to put the entry in the data specific character file anyways and make it blank so that it is obvious that it was missed. Um, and it's, you're, you're saying it's blank, it's not, it's not used. Um, <clears throat> I didn't miss it. So now with the data specific um, file, each of the placeholders that you are defining a 
um, value of 4 can be a direct value, or they themselves can use placeholders to obtain a value. Uh, this is called nesting, and it's very useful um, when you have things uh, like, for example, a fifth edition. Um, skills typically are made up of, <clears throat> the value for skills is made up of a attribute such as strength, and then potentially your proficiency bonus if you're proficient. So um, if you're defining the placeholder athletics, you could give it a hard-coded value like five, but that means that if in the future your strength increases or your proficiency bonus increases, you now need to manually adjust that athletics value. So instead, it is better to use nesting and say that athletics, <clears throat> the athletics placeholder has a value of the strength placeholder plus your proficiency bonus um, placeholder, and then provide values for the strength placeholder and the proficiency bonus uh, placeholder. That way, in the future, if your strength increases or your proficiency bonus increases, all you do is update that placeholder, the strength of the proficiency bonus, and anything that uses that will automatically get updated um, without needing to go through all the skills and updating it manually. Now, we haven't quite talked about additions yet. So, just like Tailspire, the Embedded Character Sheet plugin is very generic. It is not specific to any specific game system. So, it can be used for D&D 3.5e, it could be used for D&D 5th edition, it could be used for Pathfinder, it could be used for Pathfinder 2, it could be used for GURPS, whatever system as long as it uses dice to roll, can be used with this uh, character sheet. Realistically, um, even um, systems that don't use dice could make use of this because the character sheet system, uh, or the character sheet could be just used to display information. Um, so we've got flexibility there. Now, most likely a player is not going to be involved in only a single game. Um, they might be playing a 3.5e campaign and a Pathfinder 2 campaign. So we need some way to distinguish our character sheet layouts uh, so that we can use the 3.5e layouts for our 3.5 game and our Pathfinder 2 layouts for our Pathfinder game. So, <clears throat> the embedded character sheet uh, does this by naming the files according to <clears throat> the layout and the character name. So, when we create our layout, the name that has to be used for that uh, JSON file is embedded character sheet dot layout dot and then the name of the layout and a .csl extension. Uh, yes, the actual content is a JSON file, <clears throat> so it is actual JSON content, but it uses the CSL, um, that would be character sheet layout um, extension, so that the file can quickly be identified as being a layout file. Not that the prefix didn't already tell you that. Uh, so, in that name, you can identify the edition that you're using. So, for example, here um, we called it uh, embedded character sheet layout dot stat block dot csl. That might not be the greatest um, name because it's not telling you what system that is um, meant to be used with. It would be much better to call this, for example, embedded character sheet. Uh, dot layout dot 5e stat block or dnd 5e stat block dot csl that way you know what um, 
game system and edition the layout is for. When we get down to our character um, uh, files, the naming convention there is embedded character sheet dot data. So instead of layout data, which makes sense, dot and then the mini name dot csd. So character sheet data file. Uh, again, the contents of the file is JSON, but the CSD <coughs> extension is used to quickly identify that it is a embedded character sheet data uh, file. Now, the name that is used there is very important because it needs to match the name of the mini within Tailspire. <coughs> that is how um, the embedded character sheet uh, plugin makes the correlation between a mini in the game and the corresponding data file by using the mini's name. So if in Tailspire you've called your mini John, that is what needs to be used as part of the file name <coughs> um, when creating the data file. If you rename your mini in game, you will need to also rename the corresponding data file because otherwise again the plugin will not be able to find the corresponding data file. <clears throat> now as we um, discussed earlier um, the character specific data file has a layout um, property that indicates which layout <coughs> the character um, is using and that needs to once again match the layout that was used in naming the layout file. So here, if this was embedded character sheet dot layout dot stat block dot CSL, then in the character sheet here, the layout would be stat block. Those two need to ma match up and that's what dictates which layout the <coughs> character specific data file uses. Uh, now, one warning, when you are creating your placeholders in your layout file, which then get a value assigned to them in the uh, character specific data files, uh, make sure that your uh, placeholder names are unique and make sure that they aren't a subset of each other. So for example, if you have um, a placeholder of strength, str, uh, don't make a placeholder that's called st uh, strength underscore mod uh, because strength underscore mod has strength in it and that means depending on <clears throat> how you've placed them into your data specific file, um, it could get replaced incorrectly. Um, the strength could be recognized first and replace uh, and be replaced and then you'll end up with a number number underscore mod which doesn't make any sense and it will not work <clears throat> so try to make sure that your uh, unique placeholders are not a, um, a subset of each other uh, so then another question that might come up is <clears throat> what if I want uh, something on my character sheet which is going to be different for um, for every character. <clears throat> for example, equipment. I am, you know, I would like to have uh, equipment uh, enumerated on my character sheet, but equipment is going to be completely different for every character, so what do you do? <clears throat> well, in that case, what you would do is you would make generic entries. So you would make placeholders called item 1, item 2, item 3, item 4, item 5, and then the value can be the name of the item that you are um, that you are putting in the equipment list. Um, <clears throat> you can even do things like, um, for example, weapons. If you have a uh, you know a weapon in your equipment list, you can have a placeholder for the name of the weapon, and then you can have placeholders for things like the damage and so on 
uh, and that way you can reuse the same entries in your character sheet for different characters having completely different weapons um, but still using the same layout. Uh, the same thing can be applied <coughs> to uh, class features. So if you've got something like Bardic Inspiration, whereas a Barbarian has Rage, um, and so on, uh, again, you can make a generic entry on your character sheet for you know class feature 1, class feature 2, class feature 3, and then the uh, placeholder can be filled in on the um, uh, in the character specific file to not only identify the value but the actual name so you, you would have a placeholder of uh, let's say <coughs> class feature one name and class feature one value and then on a specific character sheet it, uh, for bard it might be class feature one name is inspiration um, and um, class feature one value might be three Uh, now, the last thing that should be touched on is uh, the concept of character-specific or group-specific. So, for PCs, uh, you're going to have a unique um, data file for each PC because each PC is very different. <clears throat> but, if you have, let's say, an enemy such as a goblin, well, chances are you're not going to be facing one goblin, you're probably going to be facing multiple goblins. <clears throat> so, you could create goblin 1, goblin 2, goblin 3, goblin 4, goblin 5, and create uh, character specific data files for each goblin, but that really doesn't make sense because unless you have different goblins, all those goblins will have the same stats. <clears throat> so, as long as you're not tracking um, hit points on the character sheet itself, you can create a goblin character sheet data file. That means naming all of your goblins goblin <clears throat> in game, and then when you bring up the character sheet for any goblin, it will always go to the same one data file because they've all got the same name. And you can track the individual hit points um, for the goblins using the Tailspire stat as opposed to using the character sheet. So that allows you to basically apply one data file to a whole group of <clears throat> of uh, monsters. Now, if you happen to have like a warrior goblin and a shaman goblin, then you would probably end up having a <clears throat> data file for each type of goblin. But again, if you have 15 warrior goblins and five shamans, you'd still only have one warrior um, data file and one shaman data file. Okay, so um, there are <clears throat> still many other features of the embedded character sheet. Um, if you are interested in those, uh, hopefully I will do a more in-depth advanced tutorial in the future. But um, until then, the embedded character sheet plugin does have full documentation on Thunderstore or <clears throat> within the plugin when you download it. And that does cover uh, most of those features. So you can uh, uh, you can read up on that um, there is various features uh, such as uh, breaking down your <clears throat> your file into um, multiple files so that uh, you can um, have like the character information section separate from the ability sections from your attacks um, that can make <clears throat> a uh, character sheet file that would uh, normally be very, very large, or a layout file that would be very, very large. Um, it allows it to break it down into um, manageable pieces. <clears throat> There's also um, functionality for being able to do uh, links. So if your character sheet is 
too big to fit on a single screen. <clears throat> you might want to use uh, things like tabs or pages. Um, there's support for that. Uh, there's support for loading textures. So if you've got um, labels of buttons that need to be pictures instead of um, text, uh, you can do that. Um, all of those features are <clears throat> available. Uh, so uh, you can uh, read the documentation for um, uh, those features. And uh, that's about it.